Jeff Brom went into the portal this weekend and added two players that will make the Louisville wide receiving core one of the best in the ACC. On today's episode of the Locked on Louisville podcast, we're talking about the additions of Colin Lacey and Ja'Cory Brooks. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. As always, I want to take this time to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the Locked On Global Podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. As I mentioned in the opener, a very, very wild weekend for the Louisville Cardinals football program um, as it relates to the transfer portal. We'll talk about two of the additions that will make the Cardinals wide receiving core one of the top in the ACC. That is South Alabama receiver Colin Lacey and Alabama receiver Ja'Cory Brooks. So we'll talk about what both of those players bring individually to this team. We'll also talk about what this means for the room moving forward. So as I sort of hinted at, Man, this weekend was absolutely crazy for Jeff Brom and the Louisville Cardinals. Um, Not only have they already started to pick up steam on the portal recruiting trail, but this weekend was sort of like the cherry on top. They received um, up until uh, Sunday evening five commitments in three days. Um, It was absolutely incredible, and we are going to take the entirety of the week to discuss these commitments to discuss some big time decisions to come back um high school commitments national signing day is coming up we'll discuss um, all of that on this week's show so be patient we're going to um obviously discuss as the week goes along so um first thing i want to talk about are the additions at the wide receiver position now granted you likely are probably going to lose Jamari Thrash. There hasn't been a lot of confirmation yet, but you would assume that Jamari Thrash is going toward, you know, making his decision to the NFL. Um, So at this point, I think Louisville still was in a spot for a wide receiver one, um, you know, and potentially two guys. And while they added two players, the first one is Colin Lacey. And Lacey will be the one that gets talked about the most because of his rankings and statistical numbers. But don't let that um, take away from what Ja'Cory Brooks brings to the table. And we'll talk about that in um, the next segment. But Lacey, this past season for South Alabama, 91 catches, 1,316 yards to go along with seven touchdowns. Um, He spent... Excuse me. He spent four years with the Jaguars program beginning in 2020, so he will have one year of eligibility remaining at Louisville. And this is an extremely solid addition. Lacey was ranked as a top five um, receiver in the portal, according to On3, who I know many Louisville fans don't really like On3, and I understand why with the seeming bias. But when it comes to transfer portal rankings, they're pretty spot on. They do a good job of incorporating high school ranking while also taking into consideration what they've done at the collegiate level. So there's a lot of context being taken into consideration. So I like on three's recruiting rankings better in terms of the transfer portal. Lacey was a top four receiver, the fourth receiver, and that was good enough to be a top 30 overall player. Now there, there were some that said, well, he was number one and that might be the case, but up until Thursday evening, he was not. So it would have had to have been before that. So I, I didn't see him at number one uh, on any of the services, but nonetheless, that doesn't take away how good of an addition this is for Jeff Brom's program next season. This is the third consecutive season that Louisville goes into the transfer portal, gets a very decorated um, non-Power 5 receiver to join the team, and hopefully, if history um, is able to repeat itself, you have another impact season that you saw from the likes of Tyler Hudson, 
from Central Arkansas in 2022. Jamari Thrash from Georgia State in 2023. Colin Lacey has the potential to continue that trend. And I think that that is a very good selling point when it comes to recruiting these types of players, especially non-Power 5 receivers. Hey, look, you can join our program and you see right away how it can absolutely benefit you. There are wide receiver one targets out there in this offense. Um, I don't necessarily think with the current roster before this weekend that there was a true wide receiver one. I think Chris Bell potentially has that um, capability of filling that role. But I, I see him as a wide receiver too. Uh, Mari Huggins, Bruce as well. So adding a potential wide receiver one was huge. And Lacey gives you that opportunity. A couple things that really um, impressed me about his game. Number one, the main thing that he's going to be able to bring to the table is his ability to stretch the field. Um, his deep route playmaking ability is exceptional. Very quick receiver, standing at five foot ten, um, 190 pounds uh, from Mobile, Alabama, was phenomenal for South Alabama this past season. Granted. The schedule wasn't the greatest. Now you obviously have to assume that he's going to be able to translate some of that production to the Power 5 level, but had a phenomenal year this year. He had five for 104 and two touchdowns at Oklahoma State when they absolutely demolished um, the Cowboys 33-7. When they played Tulane uh, the first game of the year, he had seven for 60, and that ended up essentially being one of his two only, well, actually three games in which he recorded under 100 receiving yards. So he had a phenomenal year all across the board. Um, you watch the film, it's very, very evident right away that his deep ball playmaking ability is something that the Cardinals will gladly welcome. I'm not saying that they didn't have that in 2023. I think that you have some players like Kevin Coleman Jr., like Amari Huggins, Bruce, that can fill that role. But I think Lacey's separation ability, his route running, uh, his ability to create separation at the line of scrimmage. I, I think that he could potentially be a solid, maybe hybrid number one for the Cardinals. You think of a number one receiver and you automatically um, gravitate towards a boundary receiver, but truthfully speaking, that can also apply to guys that play in the slot as well. Lacey will spend the majority of his time uh, presumably in the slot for the Cardinals. So that does make you wonder what does that mean for Amari Huggins-Bruce? What does that mean for Kevin Coleman Jr.? And we'll talk about that in the final segment. Um, but we've seen how Jeff Brom can utilize smaller receivers um, to their advantages when it comes to speed, quickness, route running. We saw it with Rondell Moore. And not only do you have that to be able to point to when it comes to being able to utilize Lacey, we can also go to, hey, look, this is a spot at Louisville that has a great opportunity with the schedule at hand to potentially – compete for a playoff spot with the 12 team playoff uh, going into effect. But I think that this makes sense for both parties. Obviously Louisville needed an upgrade in the wide receiver room. They got a decorated guy that can come in right away and um, presumably compete and thus in turn uh, put together some solid production and I think that you can never turn away too much explosiveness and big playability. At times, I feel like that was the issue for Louisville. Now, some will say, well, it was due to the quarterback play, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you there. I think that there is some truth to that, to where uh, Jack Plummer's MO wasn't really going down the field as much, but more so attacking the underneath routes. And um, if the deep ball presented itself, he would take it. But more often than not, it was sort of the short to intermediate routes that Plummer really excelled in. So Shuck is uh, Tyler Shuck is a player that, from his film at previous stops at Oregon and Texas Tech, we would be led to believe that he wants to open the field up more and throw it downfield. Shuck's interceptions really more so aren't um, directed at just mental mistakes, but him just gambling downfield. And I think that adding a guy like Lacey who can operate in the slot um, being able to catch it in the intermediate routes, solid yards after catch receiver. He averaged 14.5 yards per reception this year, and he was the number one option that all defenses looked at at South Alabama. So this is a great addition. It's one of 
those moves. There's always a couple moves that you can look at saying this can raise your ceiling. It can raise your four. It can absolutely change the dynamic of your offense. And for Louisville, I think that they made multiple additions up until this point that can do that. Lacey, for me, is a penciled-in starter for 2024. It really shouldn't surprise anyone. Another player who is a penciled-in starter, in my opinion, is Alabama transfer Ja'Cory Brooks. Um, he was the first commitment in the span of commitments over the past 72 hours. Um, played a couple years with the Crimson Tide and... Truthfully speaking, I think this is going to be another home run addition for the Cardinals. And we'll talk about why that is here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply eBay guarantee fit only available to us customers. Hey, Cardinal fans, just a reminder that locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league. Go to locked on sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports streaming channel. We just talked about Colin Lacey and what the South Alabama slot receiver brings to the Cardinals program as it relates to a uh, previous stop and playing style pretty much couldn't be any different with this next receiver. Ja'Cory Brooks comes from Alabama where he played for Nick Saban over the past three seasons. Um, the six foot two junior from Miami, Florida plays on the boundary as opposed to Lacey, who plays more in the slot. Um, and Brooks' career has been sort of up and down. He has almost 1,000 career yards. Um, 2021, he opened up his uh, Alabama career with 15 catches, 192 yards, and two touchdowns. The former five-star recruit broke onto the scene in 2022. He had 39 catches, 674 yards, and eight touchdowns. This year – was a little bit different. He only finished with three for 30. Now, he appeared in three games for Alabama. He dealt with injuries um, as seemingly all year long. Um, after that game against LSU, he didn't uh, play another game, excuse me, for the Crimson Tide. Now, I think most of it was injuries. Some more might have been just losing his spot on the depth chart, which at Alabama with the great players that they have out wide. It makes a little bit of sense, but I think it probably for him, if he looked to make a change of scenery, it would make sense for him to potentially go and be a potential wide receiver one at the very least wide receiver two in 2024. Um, for me, Ja'Cory Brooks will join this program and be one of the best receivers on the team. That sounds like I'm saying that maybe the guys in the room already are not good enough. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I think Ja'Cory Brooks is a player that does what Lacey does. He raises your floor while also raising your ceiling. Brooks has true wide receiver one potential. Now you can say, well, he played at Alabama where you know they have had Bryce Young and now – you know, they have Jalen Milrow, which he didn't really play much with Milrow this year. But Bryce Young for the past two years, Alabama O-line, you're going to be better than almost every team you play. I would spend that to play the devil, devil's advocate in suggesting, well, he was good enough to play for Alabama a good amount over his three years with the Crimson Tide down in Tuscaloosa. So I understand the whole argument over – talent that you're playing with, but I don't necessarily think that really puts too much 
emphasis on the wide receiver position. I think that Brooks is a player that when you watch him play at six foot two, 195 pounds, has that jump ball capability that I feel like this team has been missing. Now, Chris Bell, I think, has that potential. And I, I will continue to say that maybe the wide receivers were um, held back just a little bit this year due to the nature of the Cardinals offense to where it was a run dominant offense. And when Jack Plummer did throw the ball more often than not, it went to Jamari Thrash, who was his security blanket. So if Shuck can um, deviate the um, the targets, I, I personally think that guys like Chris Bell, Kevin Coleman Jr., Amari Huggins Bruce, some of the freshmen that are coming back, Jimmy Callaway, Jaden Thompson, they can definitely take the next step forward. And this is not, don't take this episode as me saying that the wide receiver position for Louisville wasn't good enough already. I was not saying that whatsoever. It was very solid. Now it's one of the best in the ACC because you added two uh two guys that will be playing in the NFL uh, coming up pretty soon. I would suggest Brooks like Lacey has one year remaining. I guess um, if he appeared in three games, there might be a possibility for him to take a red shirt year and play two seasons uh, or have two more seasons of eligibility. But if he has a good year at Louisville in 2024, I would assume that he uh, pursues professional aspirations. So like I mentioned, Brooks, brings immediate jump ball possibilities to this program, something that I really feel will help when it comes to, um, you know, the red zone, when it comes to the route running, because he's also a solid route runner. For me, the main thing that is encouraging about Brooks is his explosiveness. He has shown time and time again, you look at what he did in that 2022 season, which I'm basing a lot of this on. He had an absolute phenomenal year you look at some of the numbers that he put up four of 76 in a touchdown against Auburn two for 51 in a touchdown against Kansas State in the Sugar Bowl he had seven of 97 and a touchdown against LSU four of 61 and a touchdown against Ole Miss etc you move on six for 79 against Tennessee I mean the list goes on and on Brooks is a very solid receiver will he be in the conversation for the Blitnikoff Award, probably not, but I think that there is possibility of all ACC recognitions there. So um, for me, this is a move that makes sense for Louisville. You go out and you get a player that is sort of different when it comes to skill set versus the guys you already have. You need a guy to replace. Even Look, even if you have a guy like Chris Bell, you still need a player on the opposite boundary. And Kevin or Colin Lacey is a player that plays more so in the slot. So essentially, I look at this as you replace Jamari Thrash with um, Ja'Cory Brooks, which is a very solid trade-off. I know that Brooks didn't necessarily come to Louisville with the statistical numbers that Thrash had, but you look at him having almost a thousand yards in three seasons with Alabama and how spread out um, the ball gets thrown there. It makes a lot of sense. I think that Brooks second level speed, his ability to make big plays happen, the explosive yards after catch capabilities. Um, it, it just makes truthfully too much sense for me in three years at Alabama, 15.7 yards per reception so I think one common characteristic of explosive offenses is players that have the potential to make explosive plays you lose Jawar Jordan we're going to talk about the Cardinals adding Don Chaney later on in the week you're potentially losing Jamari Thrash so you bring in Lacey you bring in Brooks both of these guys extremely quick fast Agile, they make defenders miss. They're very, very solid after the catch. They turn catches into big games, uh, big gains, I should say. Um, they are solid deep ball catchers as well. So main thing for me is just the explosiveness. One thing I also found interesting is that Brooks is a big game player. What I mean by that is he makes plays in very bright moments. And that's something that you can't really quantify as much in the box score. I guess you can, but it doesn't count much more than a regular statistic. But he's made some big-time plays. Freshman year, he made a phenomenal back shoulder catch 
down in the Iron Bowl at Auburn that really um, helped the tide in that game toward the very end of regulation. So it makes sense to me that you go out and you add both of these guys. What these two additions do for Louisville, simply put, it makes the Cardinals wide receiving core one of the top in the ACC. And I'll tell you why here momentarily. Before we do that, I want to thank you all again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services, including YouTube, uh, five days a week, your team, every day. On tomorrow's episode of the show, um, we will have Brian Smith, Locked On Podcast Recruiting Analyst, on to talk about uh, the return of Ashton Gelati, what that means for the program. Um, we'll also talk about the Cardinals receiving a commitment from Don Chaney, Miami transfer running back, and also a um, a, a new 2024 high school commitment. So we will have him on the show tomorrow discussing all three very notable headlines. So final segment of the show, however, we're kind of tying in this episode and, and hammering the point home that the wide receiving core for Louisville will now be one of the best in the ACC after the additions of Colin Lacey and Ja'Cory Brooks. Now, you think about the potential places that have the best ACC receiving cores. I mean, you talk about Ford State. Clemson is kind of hit or miss. We will see. Um, Virginia had two guys that were very good. We'll see if they return. But – I truly think that they're going to have, in my opinion, a top three wide receiving core in the ACC for starters and for depth alike. Now, granted, this argument is prefaced by the notion that they don't lose many guys to the portal because the portal giveth, the portal taketh away, right? You add Lacey and Brooks, that looks good on paper, but you start to look at the numbers in this room. There's this talk about potential multiple-time transfers that aren't going to be disallowed. So Jaden Thompson, Jimmy Callaway, Kevin Coleman Jr. could then potentially transfer out and not have to sit out. I'm not saying they will. It's just a possibility. So I'm prefacing this by saying that, well, you can't lose a ton of your guys. Now, we talked about Lacey playing the slot. What is this going to mean for Kevin Coleman Jr.? What is this going to mean for Amari Huggins-Bruce? You bring in Ja'Cory Brooks. Is this going to take away the target share that Chris Bell was looking to see? Jimmy Calloway, Jaden Thompson, the freshmen that are coming back, William Fowles, um, Kataris Hicks, uh, Jalil McClain. There's some freshmen in the mix. Sean Boykins. JoJo Stone, I'm not really worried about the freshman as much as more so the redshirt freshman coming back that likely, unless they show out, won't see too much of the field. Um, so I personally think my gut and intuition is telling me that you're going to see a player or two out of this group enter the portal because of playing time. Now, whether it's a player that's transferred in already whether it is a returning player, I, I'm not necessarily sh so sure. But you look at the group, and it's pretty crowded, and that's how receiving cores usually are at top programs. So this, I will go ahead and reiterate again, is a great problem to have. So looking at it, I think you're going to see one to two players. So let's talk about what we know so far. For me, if you're looking at the three starters, across the board for the receiving core. I think, obviously, Ja'Cory Brooks is one of them. I think that Colin Lacey is another one of them. And then you can look at one of these three. You can look at one of AHB, one of Chris Bell, and one of Kevin Coleman Jr. For schematic purposes, Bell plays on the outside. Um, Amari more so in the slot. Kevin Coleman can play both. So I, I think more so the two at the end, Chris Bell, Kevin Coleman, would probably be my guess, although Amari is in that conversation as well. So if Louisville brings back those five, I mean, that that's a top receiving core right there, and I, I truly think it's not really debatable. 
because you bring in uh you bring back a good amount of the returning players and you bring in Brooks and Lacey and that's I mean that puts you over the top not to mention you also have a guy like Jimmy Callaway who showed that he was pretty solid this year Jaden Thompson as well so right there before you talk about any of the red shirt freshmen you have seven receivers across the board now granted you're going to have guys rotate in and out so the three starters aren't going to play all all year long and be the only guys to play and there's going to be different packages there's going to be different um schematic sets that dictate who's going to play i would imagine that brooks lacy are going to play the majority while you know kevin coleman will also have a good amount of snaps chris bell amar higgins bruce uh, jimmy callaway Jaden thompson there's seven guys competing for these snaps. And that's not to mention William Fowles, Kataris Hicks, Jaleel McClain, et cetera. So like I mentioned, you look at that group with AHB, Jimmy Callaway, Jaden Thompson, Chris Bell, Kevin Coleman, and then you look at the red shirt freshman group. For me personally, I'll be completely honest. I This is based on no knowledge of anything or knowledge of inside information. This is more so intuition and understanding that, I mean, players don't want to have to sit, and it makes sense. I would probably – it wouldn't surprise me if one of the redshirt freshmen transfers and one of that group of five transfers because that would make sense because you – it's going to be hard to really justify that all seven of these receivers are going to be happy with the target share, not to mention the tight ends that are coming in that – you know tight end is going to be more of a focus in this offense moving forward. The running backs committee is going to be uh, a focal point as well. So, And there's some other guys that are also out there that if they were to commit to Louisville, like a potential Jalen Lucas who visited this past weekend, he would get a target share as well as an all-purpose back. So only one football to go around, and that's where things get a little bit tricky. But if they are able to hold on to three – or four of the group with Amari, Chris, Kevin, Jimmy, and Jaden. I think if you hold on to at least three, you have one of the best receiving cores in the ACC. Um, and it, it's really not debatable for me. It might even potentially be one of the best in the country, but I don't want to go as far as saying that just yet, obviously. And they're playing in a scheme that is very receiver friendly. So great, great news for the wide receiving core for the Cardinals. Great news for the program in general. As I said, multiple commitments that there are still to talk about. We will do that all throughout the entirety of the show. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about South Florida on tomorrow's episode of the show with Locked On Podcast National Recruiting Analyst Brian Smith, who is living down in that area, uh, covers Florida State, covers Miami, covers the national recruiting stage. We'll talk about Ashton Gelati returning, what that means for the Cardinals. Don Chaney making his commitment to the Cardinals program, the Miami transfer running back and what he brings to this team next year. And then there is a new 2024 commitment that we will talk about. So be sure to stay tuned to that show um, and be sure to stay tuned to the show all week. It's going to be a week with a lot of great content. So be sure to stay tuned, but that's going to wrap up this episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here.